the vertical stress would always be on the diagonal of this table. So that's Anderson classification. We've already seen this equation. Uh, slightly different notation when I did it, but this, you know, this is a. We got this equation when we took the equations for conservation of momentum, canceled the terms associated with any shear on the surface of the Earth, because we know the surface of the Earth is in contact with the fluid, and therefore there can't be shear on the surface of the Earth, and it canceled terms such that we ended up with an equation for S33, which is what we call now the vertical stress. And then if you integrate that equation over the vertical distance, uh, in this case we've just, you know, in, in those equations I think we were using x1, x2, x3. Now in this notation we have x, y, z right, for the three orthogonal coordinates. Uh, so the z is the distance into the ground. And the density there, uh, what I didn't mention, the density there is the bulk density. So in this equation, um, the density is going to be the, what we call the bulk density. And the bulk density is going to be 1 minus the porosity times the density of the solid plus the porosity and the density of the fluid. And here I'm applying that the fluid is one fluid. Like it's all water. Right? But in, in reality, you could have the density of the fluid could be a composition of water, oil, <laughs> gas, and their respective saturations. Right? But the density there is the, the, you know, it's the density of the water and the, you know, the fluid and the solid in the rock. And then if you integrate that, multiply times g, gravity, and integrate over depth, then that'll give you an, an estimation of, of the, um, the vertical stress. I say estimation because we don't, it's unlikely we know the density exactly all the way down to the bottom of the reservoir we're interested in. So in offshore areas, we can simplify it a little bit by just splitting the integral. Right? If we, you know, any integral you can, uh, you can split over continuous bounds, right? So we're just going to split the integral uh, from the surface to the ocean floor, which means over a distance of water. And water, you know, neglecting some small changes in density due to salinity variations, which are, pro are negligible in this calculation, the density of water is a constant, right? And so then if density of water is a constant, we can integrate the equation analytically, and then we just have the density of water times gravity times the depth of water. And then we continue the integration from the ocean floor to the depth of the reservoir. couple of rules of thumb, we, you know, rules of thumb imply things you should just know, right? And in this class, things you should just know imply things that will be on exams, right? So, uh, the density of water is approximately one gram per cubic, uh, per cubic centimeter, and that increases at a rate of 10 megapascals per kilometer, or 0.44 psi per foot. You should just know those things. 10 megapascal per kilometer, 0.44 psi per foot. The density of rock is by no means a constant, but approximately right, 2.3 grams per centimeter cubed, and that increases at a rate of 23 megapascals per kilometer. And this one we get really lucky on 1 psi per foot. That makes things really easy. So if I ask you, if I'm just talking about, um, often when I'm just talking about uh, the vertical stress, we'll use another term often that we might call the overburden, overburden pressure, overburden stress. 
So if I ask you what's the overburden stress at 8,000 feet, answer, you know, what's your answer in one second? 8,000 PSI. We get lucky. So the, uh, you know, a more accurate way, if we actually have density logs, then a more accurate way that than, than using those rules of thumb is to just integrate the density logs. And so this is pretty common uh, plot that you'll see where the density is constant down to the seafloor, right, because the density of water is constant. And then you'll almost always see this sort of dropout, this, this region where you don't really have data. And that's because the, most, the ocean floor doesn't, it's not just often, you know, there's sediment there. So it's not just water and then instantly a solid, very dense rock, right? There's always some sediment there, and it's very difficult. So the density in that sediment region is very low, and it's very difficult to get accurate density logs while drilling. So you almost always see this sort of dropout region. <coughs> so if you actually integrate to the left of the curve, right, then you get a plot that, that, you know, do a cumulative integration, then you get a plot that looks like this. Again, the axes are flipped, but nevertheless, the thing to take away from this is this change in slope. So you'll, you'll always see this, you know, uh, change in slope as you transition um, from the seafloor uh, into the into the region, and obviously this this plot has been extrapolated because, or at least interpolated, it's been interpolated between the region where you have real, the, the region where you know the density over the water, and the region where you have real density logs, and the region in between to to produce a straight line that's just been interpolated. No, you'd probably see a straight line on land for the most part. Yeah. I mean, again, these are, you know, this is plotted over uh, 1,400 feet, 14,000 feet, rather. And y there may be, you know, in the first tens or hundreds of feet, you might, there might be some you know, density variation. But once you get into the sort of bedrock, you know, after just a few feet. Or 